we got here is a uh, Crown Reach truck. It's an RR5210 and complaint from the customer is that it is intermittently, intermittently coating out 222 which is an open circuit in a pump. So as you can see, um, it came in here for a second opinion. The first company who went in installed a brand new Access 2. And of course the problem still present. So now it's here for a second opinion. So let's try it out. Let's key on. So no codes. Apparently it would only happen, of course, when you step on the pedal. I'll step on the pedal right now to activate that pump motor. It ran, no problem, all right. So what we got is my uh, oscilloscope hooked up. Channel A would be on the A1 connection going towards the um, controller. And channel B, which would be my power supply, my B plus, and of course a current clamp so that we can see the current that's being consumed by this motor. So set up on the oscilloscope, 50 volts on channel A, 50 volts on channel B, B and then a current clamp, uh, negative 100 to 200 amps. Um, let's change the time base so we can see it around one second per division. All right, let me step on this. It's running. Okay, we're good with that. Okay, let me just add a filter to channel C. Let's see. Okay. So I'm going to try to step on this again and again. So possibly codes out. So, from my understanding, the tech who was looking at this before from another company uh, thought it was the uh, dead man switch, what I'm stepping on right now. Because apparently it would only happen, of course, when you step on the dead man. So they were thinking, um, besides replacing the controller, they were thinking it has something to do with the switch, the foot pedal switch or the dead man switch. But of course, it's the only time that the motor it's gonna run, and there we go. So now it's the code. We're able to make it code out. Let's look at the code. Yeah, okay, that's two, two, two. Okay. So we captured it in the moment that it coded out. Let's go back. So this is where it coded out. Let's go back a bit. So. See, the big difference, number one, is that you don't have a lot of feedback from that motor, all right? To me, that's meaning to say that it did not produce a high magnetic field, not like here, but also, if you look at it, my current is flatline. So right here, let's zoom in a bit on this part right here, where it was still working. Grab a comparison. Okay, let's clean up channel A. Let's clean up channel B. Okay, channel A we can clean up. Okay, this is where the pulsing happens. Okay, let's zoom in a bit. So this is the current, which is the green. And the current, when it was still running okay, peaked at about 198 and then it settled down to about 96 amps, okay. 96 amps when it settled down, and then channel A will be the pulsing, or the possible modulation signal from the computer. As you can see, zooming in, computer on this provides the negative and when it was working we can see that it provided the negative about 700 
millivolts. So that's a good signal from the computer. The red is gonna be our power supply. And all throughout that process, it was at 23.97, which is good battery voltage. So now let's go to the capture where it started coding out. Zoom in again, all right. So as you can see right here, the green trace, which is my uh, current flat line, so zero current. And that's why the computer is saying that there's an open circuit because there's no current flow. Okay, did the computer do its job to provide the negative? Okay. Okay, yes it did. So right here, we can see that there was no change right here. Still 700 millivolts, which is good in my book as far as the computer's being able to provide a good negative. And you can see also on the red trace, it did not drop. So my power supply is good. My negative from the computer is good. And the only reason why we, we would have no current flow is that there is an open in the motor itself. So zero, zero on the current. And when we look at as the code, two, 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 pump motor two current, pump M2 motor, open circuit. So there's no M3 on this one, it's just an M2. This is for the uh, two stage, two speed. Uh, M2 is right here. The blue trace is hooked up to A1, which provides the negative, and we know the computer is able to provide a good negative on that. So I'm not gonna check that anymore. Of course, this is already a new computer. So the only thing I was doubting on this is a good connection to the negative from the computer. And we can see from that capture that the negative is good, the computer is good, of course, the B plus is good, and this is um, two terminal motor and it's like a series one connection so the only way if the computer is providing a negative and your positive is always present the only way that you're gonna have you're not gonna have any current flow on this motor is that the motor dynamically is uh, getting high resistance within itself so what produces the high resistance at this point I mean we can look at the motor. Boxes are still good. I think they replaced it. It looks like it's new. The uh, commutator is not really that good, but again, it might be in the field circuit. It might be in the commutator or in the brush bridge. Um, but right now, for sure, it's going to be in the motor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quote this uh, customer a rebuilt motor. I am not gonna take this apart. Uh, I'm gonna send it to somewhere else for it to get rebuilt and check. And after that, if the customer approves this, then we're gonna do a, um, another test to see the difference. If we can see the difference, but because it's intermittently happening dynamically. So from what I read on the report given by the uh, First company who looked at this, they tested the motor statically, meaning static that there's no current flow. So they tested um, terminal to terminal, that's good resistance. Motor to uh, terminal to frame, tested good, and that's why they went away from the motor and started with the um, cables. And of course the cable also tested good. And of course they went with a controller, which unfortunately did not fix it. So. Looking at it dynamically, there is no doubt that the problem in this truck is with the motor. I got the new motor back, well, we built motor back. Uh, already installed it, step on it. Okay. And we're going to recording out, but of course this problem is uh, intermittent to begin with. But I think the diagnostic was sound, um, but of course the real test is when we give it back to the customer and have them try it out. But I talked to the um, company that rebuilt the motor. Uh, they said that something was uh, wrong with the brush holder, which kind of makes sense. I didn't specify um, what actually went wrong, 
but we got the direction that we needed to go that the problem was actually in the, the uh, lip motor and so for now we're going to call it a